Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. As I've showcased over the last month or so, Nintendo Switch emulation got a huge performance upgrade, mostly due to the introduction of multi-core CPU emulation in Yuzu. In the past, this emulator required a very, very beefy CPU in order to maintain playable performance levels. This was mainly due to its reliance on single core performance, meaning that if you didn't have something like an 8700K, 9900K or any of the Zen 2 Ryzen CPUs, you were basically out of luck if you wanted to get and maintain full speed in any of your favourite Nintendo Switch games. For this video, I picked up a new or old system I guess you can call it. This is an i5-4690K in a Z970 Gaming 5 motherboard. It's a little bit dirty, dusty and grimy, but once I get it cleaned up, it should work really well when paired with my Enermax CPU cooler. This is one you may have seen in older videos of mine. I picked up this CPU motherboard and also 16GB of RAM in a package deal for €140. Euros. This is the RAM I got, it is 16GB of HyperX Beast 2133MHz. I also just had this Samsung SSD lying around and while I was initially going to use an RX 580 GPU, the one you can see underneath here, I decided that for the best possible performance I was just going to pick up a GTX 1060. I got this one for 110 euros and while it's a bit dusty and grimy, as with the motherboard once I give it a quick spray with some condensed air it should be perfect and will be popping it into the system. Now the eagle eyed among you may have noticed there are a few additional components on my workspace. This is a project I've been working on for the last while where I'm trying to scavenge cheap Nintendo Switch parts from around the internet and hopefully once a Assembled, I will have another hackable and fully functional Nintendo Switch which can all go into this fully functional housing. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel for that video. For now though, let's jump straight into the benchmarks and see how the most popular Nintendo Switch games run on this low to mid tier system. First up, there's absolutely nothing special about the CPU I'm using for this video. As I said previous, it's just an i5-4690K, this is a 4 core CPU which I have overclocked to a fairly average 4.2 GHz. While Sand Kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey is a fairly intense level, it does maintain basically 60 frames per second almost at all times on this CPU, so as a proper benchmark, I wanted to test out one of the more demanding areas in gameplay. For this test, there's pretty much no area better suited than Metro Kingdom, this area, even on the Nintendo Switch, gets significant performance drops, so for a benchmark like this, this is the perfect area for testing. While the game obviously isn't maintaining a perfectly locked 60 frames per second, it is absolutely a playable performance level, which is pretty damn crazy considering the CPU in this system basically cost me 40 euros. Our performance numbers for Super Mario Odyssey in its most demanding area come in at a minimum of 40 FPS, an average of 55 FPS and our maximum obviously being 60. Some pretty awesome performance being hammered out by the old 4 core Haswell chip, being able to maintain an average frame rate of 55 frames per second is pretty damn impressive. Next up, let's take a look at Pokemon Sword and Shield. This title being by far the most played game on a Yuzu emulator, it was pretty much top of my list for benchmark testing when it came to this video. Usage wise, I am using a few mods that visually enhance this game, I'm using my Pokemon retextured mod, and on top of this, I'm also using the Force Maximum Resolution mod, which forces this game to render at 1080p resolution at all times. As with Super Mario Odyssey, I wanted to test the most performance demanding areas in game. This means Route 1, the Wild Area, as well as Widen, which we're going to take a look at in just a moment. Again, performance wise, you can see it's basically running at a locked 30 frames per second. However, on this 4 core CPU, there was one thing that I noticed happened that did not happen on my 6 core 8700K. When moving from area to area in the wild zone, the frame rate does tend to drop down to 28 or 29 frames per second. This mainly happens because all of the new Pokemon are being loaded into that area. When they pop up, the frame rate does tend to drop by one or two. It's not very noticeable and it absolutely does not distract from gameplay. However, it is something that I just wanted to note in relation to performance. The most demanding area in Pokemon Sword and Shield is the Widen Town area. And as you can see here, we are running at a locked 30 frames per second on this old 4-core CPU. 
As with Super Mario Odyssey, the performance that we're able to hammer out in this game is pretty damn impressive. For Pokemon Sword and Shield, our performance numbers stack up like this. The lowest we got was 14 frames per second, though it should be noted that this 14 frame per second drop occurred in a loading screen and not in gameplay. Our average frame rate was 29.8 frames per second, with our maximum again obviously being 30. Some pretty awesome performance being pushed out by this CPU in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Our next game for testing is yet another very, very popular one, Animal Crossing New Horizons. With this game basically being a relaxation simulator, and considering there is a dramatic variance from island to island, I wasn't really too sure on how I was going to benchmark it. Basically, what I've done is I've gotten an almost completely full island full of NPCs, objects, trees, fish, rivers, waterfalls, you name it. Then I just ran around the island to see what kind of performance levels I was getting. To be honest, I was kind of surprised by how well this game ran, and while dropping down from 30 to 20 to 23 frames per second may seem disheartening, we also need to remember that the CPU being used for this benchmark is almost 9 years old. Performance wise, the numbers for Animal Crossing New Horizons come in like so. We have a minimum frame rate of 20 frames per second, an average frame rate of 24 frames per second, and again, our maximum frame rate is the maximum cap of this game, 30 frames per second. That's some pretty incredible performance being pushed out by this 8 year old CPU, which again, I have to remind you, cost me only 40 euros. Our second to last game for performance benchmark testing is yet another very, very popular one, and one of the most requested games for performance testing on my channel. Let's take a look at Super Smash Bros Ultimate. As with Animal Crossing New Horizons, I'm not really sure how to properly benchmark and test this game, so all that I've done is I've taken two level 9 CPU players, enabled every single power up in the game, then just let them go ham at each other for a 5 minute match. Again, before I did this test, I also tested 4 player smash, but it was pretty messy and the performance was pretty much identical to a 2 player match, so for the sake of a more consistent benchmark, that is the reason that I switched to a 2 player versus game. One thing I want to note is that any of the small drops you see down to 54 or 55 frames per second are not caused by shader caching. For these two characters on this stage, I have built a complete shader cache, so any drops you are seeing are just drops that are present in the emulator at this present moment. Another thing that should be noted is that even with these FPS drops, your game is always going to maintain one times speed. In my testing, even when I limited the frame rate to 35 frames per second, gameplay was still very, very smooth and Smash was still very, very playable. The performance numbers for Super Smash Bros Ultimate come out like this. Our minimum FPS was 48 frames per second. This minimum number occurred at the very start of a match just as everyone was loading in. The average frame rate was 58 frames per second, and again, since the cap of this game is 60, 60 frames per second was our maximum. As with all the other games we've taken a look at, this is very, very playable performance levels. Hopefully, once all of the issues relating to the World of Light game mode are fixed, Smash Ult is going to be an awesomely playable game, even on much, much lower end hardware than you would expect. Our final game for benchmarking on this emulator's new multicore backend is yet another very, very popular one requested by you guys many, many times in the past few weeks. Let's take a look at Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, since this game runs basically at a locked 30 frames per second at all times on this test system, I wanted to give it a proper benchmark, so for that reason, I'm going to be using the 60 frames per second mod, which works both on this emulator and also natively on the Nintendo Switch. Now, for anybody who's already played this game, be it on the emulator or on Switch, you're probably already aware that most battles are not very demanding, meaning that for the most part on this i5 4690K system, it's running somewhere between 55 and 60 frames per second, pretty much regardless of what's happening on screen. The most demanding area by far in Fire Emblem Three Houses is in fact the hub area, the monastery. 
even in this, the most demanding of demanding areas, we are still able to maintain well above the native 30 frames per second that this game runs at without the use of this 60 frames per second mod. Another thing to note is that Fire Emblem Three Houses, similar to Super Smash Bros Ultimate, also runs at 1x speed irrespective of what your performance level is, making the use of this 60 frames per second mod even better. The performance numbers for Fire Emblem Three Houses come out like so. Our minimum frame rate is 42 frames per second that was, as expected, recorded in the monastery area. Our average FPS was 54 frames per second, and again, since I'm using a 60 frames per second mod, our maximum FPS level was 60. Again, some pretty damn impressive performance numbers coming out of one of the most played games on Yuzu Emulator. And to be honest, by all of the benchmarking I've done for this video, I think we've laid to rest the fact that for this emulator and for Nintendo Switch emulation in general, you need a very, very beefy CPU. Thanks to this multi-core update, this simply is no longer true. Now, there are some caveats to Yuzu emulator at the moment, for instance, if you have an AMD GPU, you're probably not going to have the best time performance-wise, at least on Windows using the native driver. These performance issues can almost be completely fixed by using Linux with the Mesa or Mesa Git driver. However, I obviously know that that isn't going to be a solution for everyone since either dual booting or running Linux as a main OS isn't going to be an option for everyone. Hopefully, on Yuzu, we'll see some improvements to the stability of the Vulkan API. Performance levels we see on Vulkan are super, super awesome for AMD GPUs, so hopefully we see some stability improvements to it very soon. As always, if there are any games that you would like to see me additionally test on this mid or low end system, do let me know down below in the comments, and again, for all of my Patreon supporters, if you have any games you would like to request for testing, do so either over on Patreon or in the exclusive Patron channel over on my Discord. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video guys. Once again, thank you all for watching, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.